class to our annual festival Dionysus. Um, I just talked about the festival in case you haven't attended before. Um, just so you know that the students have only had about three weeks to prepare for this production. So they've had to go from research to script writing to blocking, costuming, memorizing lines and having everything ready for you today. So that's quite an achievement. I'm so proud of them, they've worked really hard. And we have two awesome performances this period, and then we have one more at the top of third period. So I thank all the teachers for coming down and uh, supporting the humanities program, and I hope you enjoy the show. One final thing, because it is an assessment and the kids aren't mic'd individually, I do need to be able to hear the lines, and of course I want you to hear the lines as well. But we do appreciate laughter and applause. <laughs> So if you could silence your cell phones, and thank you again for coming. All right, so our first play today is going to be the story of Skyron. Today we are going to tell the story of Skyron and Theseus. This is Skyron, notorious outlaw, son of Poseidon, and the mortal Iphimedia. This is Theseus, legendary hero of Athens, son of Poseidon and Aethra of Trozen. Born in the seafaring state of Megaris, Skyron is proud to be a child of the sea god, but Theseus, raised by his mother in Trozen, has yet to know his true lineage. As he does with all of his children, Poseidon presides over the lives of Skyron and Theseus, keeping an eye out to make sure nothing goes wrong. He is often joined by his wife, Amphitrite, and her sister Thetis. My son Skyron is so lazy. All he does is play discus and hang out with his friends. Don't worry, dear. I'm sure he'll grow up eventually. No, I'm sick of it. There's no way I'm gonna let my son turn into a lazy fool. He has to be a hero. He has to be a man. He has to be a man! Skyron! What? Come downstairs. I need you immediately. Why? Just come now. Fine. What do you want? What? Don't talk to me like that. I'm your father. I'm also a god. What are you doing? And you? You're my son. There's, you, you have a reputation to keep. You can't act like this anymore. You know what? Amphitrite and I have decided that you're going to enroll in the army. What? I haven't even done anything wrong. Why would I have to join the army? You two don't get to make decisions for me. Amphitrite isn't even my mother. She's just some insignificant goddess of what? Fish? I'm going to stop you right there, okay? Your insolence, it dishonors us all. You have one week to enlist in the army before I strike all in the gears with drought. But, but... Fine. I can't believe that Skyron has made it this long in the military. I mean, that's my son. What do you expect? Like, where do you think he gets his strengths, looks, godlike appeal from? You know, it's me. I knew he would succeed. Yeah, Petra, you don't be so negative. He's, Skyron's already a general, it's only been three years. Exactly, and get this, I was looking over him just last week, and he's single-handedly building a road for the entire army to utilize for many years to come. Well, when you put it that way... Look, there he comes now! Finally, the road is done. <laughs> I can retire, settle down, have a wife and children. I can live in my old age in Kingston. Whoa! <laughs> What's going on, beautiful? Mom, why won't you tell me you 
my father is. What do you mean, honey? You've always told me tales of how great and strong he was, but you've never even given me his name. Well... Well, what? I don't exactly know who your father is. <laughs> what? How could, what do you mean? How could you not know? It's complicated. Complicated? All I'm saying is there were a couple options. So I guess we'll never know. <laughs> you can't keep doing this. You just have to tell me already. What are you hiding? I'm not hiding anything, dear. That's enough. Just tell me. All right, all right. I wasn't supposed to tell you this until you were older, but two weeks after I left King Aegis's court, I discovered that I was pregnant. Wait, King Aegis? Yes, King Aegis. That King Aegis. King of Athens. Well, at least does this mean I get to go on a journey? Yeah. Take a walk over to Athens and check up on old Aegis. What a guy, that guy. Your dad left you some stuff under a rock. Oh boy, let's go check it out. It's sandals so you can walk good, and a sword so you can do murders on the way. Perfect. Now you are ready to face various villains and monsters. Go now to Athens and claim your inheritance as you are the true son of Aegis. Probably. <laughs> Wow, I am so glad that we were able to settle down, have four beautiful children, and settle by the Sea of Corinth. Four beautiful children that are gone. They've left us for their own journey, giving us more time together in our old age, my lovely Caraclo. <laughs> Quick, let us hide. No one can know that we're here, spying on Skyrim. Do you see her? Is Poseidon here? No. Good. I'm so sick of Skyron, always getting all of Poseidon's attention. He never has any time for me, going on and on about how strong he is or something. Yeah. The only way to receive more attention from my husband is if I get Skyron out of the picture. Well, I can't kill Skyron. Poseidon would be too distraught. But if I make him so lonely and depressed that he can no longer impress my husband, maybe if I make his wife Caraclo leave him, yeah, that could work. Yeah. You distract Skyron. I'll talk to Caraclo and convince her to leave her husband. Okay. Woo! All right, hold on. Now, what was that sound? I'm not sure, honey. I'll go check it out. All right, go check it out. All right, now, hold on a minute. Who are you? I am Amphitrite, goddess of the seas, queen of the fish. Now, let me ask you something. Why are you here? I have no fish. <laughs> You must listen to me, beautiful Caraclo. Now that your children are grown and gone, you have no reason to stay with Skyron. I have a better option for you. But he's my husband, and I love my husband. He is my husband. <laughs> now, he, is been, he has been caught up with the military, so let me hear about this other figure. The centaur Chiron. He is kind and caring and can provide for you beyond what Skyron ever could. And I heard he has a house in the Hamptons. Mm. Well, I have heard of this character before, and uh, he is very tall, and he's very strong. So, uh, let's hear more about him. Let us find him. Caraclo, I couldn't find anything. Oh my god, where's Caraclo? <laughs> Where's Caraclo? <laughs> Oh, Caraclo, why did you leave me? I'm so alone. I have no wife and no children and no wife. I'm so alone. What has happened to my son Skyro? He was so strong and powerful. Now look at him. He's weak and lonely. Where's Caraclo? Why has she left? I don't know. Don't look at me. I guess you just left him. Now all we can do is leave Skyron to the horn, and maybe you can hang out with him. Don't be foolish. I can't let my son sit here all lonely and depressed. He needs something. Or maybe something. And you're trying to go fetch me my horn. You mean the human's life you need for him? Yes. We should get Skyron to the horn. Don't be silly. 
Everyone knows that's not how human flesh eating tortoises work. Everyone knows that human flesh eating tortoises don't actually eat people unless, you know, someone accidentally feeds them humans, and then they can't get enough. Plus, he is a young tortoise, so it won't be a problem for many weeks to come. Exactly. Plus, Skyron, my son, he's just so smart. Look at him. There's no way he would let that happen. Man, my son, so smart. Oh, Caraclo, why did you leave me? Caraclo. <laughs> Dad? Yes, yes, it is I, the great god Poseidon. God of the seas, horses, earthquakes, you name it. I'm here as I have the answer to your prayers. If I pray for anything? Behold, I have my favorite pet, the tortoise. Let it be your companion. What in Zeus's name am I gonna do with a tortoise? Uh, love it, care for it. Owning a tortoise is actually really rewarding. Uh... I mean, if you don't want it. No, no, I'll take it. But really? Here, here you go, take it. Oh, man. But, but what do you call it? But look at him, his name's Thomas, of course. If you say so. Oh, but my son, there's one last thing I must warn you about. This is a godly tortoise, so you'll grow really big and get very hungry real quick. So don't, I repeat, do not let it eat any humans, because once it gets a taste of human flesh, there's no turning back. Uh, what? You know what, don't even worry about it. You're my son. There's no way you would let my pet tortoise eat humans? You're so smart. You got this, Skyron. I believe in you. You got this. All right. Well, Thomas, I guess it's just you and me now. I can't believe it's only been two weeks. Thomas and Skyron have grown so close. I know. And Thomas. Thomas has just grown. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here they come now. <laughs> oh my, Thomas, how you've gotten so big. <laughs> Much, but what are you doing here? Well, there's just been this is giant tortoise that's been going around town causing a ruckus. He's eaten three of my cattle already. He's eaten half of Tucker's herd. And well, I don't know if you knew anything about it. Why would I know anything about it? Well, basically, word on the street is, is that it's your tortoise. So like I wasn't really asking. But but wow, well, I don't know anything about that. And even if I did, what would you want me to do? Well, me and a couple of the boys, we're gonna go, like, round up, and we're gonna go catch this tortoise, and we're gonna sacrifice him to the gods. And, um, you know, because we don't really want the creature like this just roaming around, you know? Look, I already told you I'm innocent, so why don't you just go on your way back to the audience? Mmm, no, I think, uh, I think I'm gonna stay right here. I, uh, you seem pretty lonely ever since Carico left you, so, like, I think I'm gonna give you a little bit of company. No, I'm, I'm fine, but thanks. No, 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 really. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't mind at all. Like, uh, I mean, like, not only that, but like, your kids left you too. So, like, really nothing else he can do. Dude, I'm really, I can keep myself entertained. Mmm, I don't know. I mean, pretty recently I've been, like, walking around town. I've seen Caraclo and Chiron, you know, just walking around town. And, um... Goodbye, Ian. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, uh, I, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't really know about that. I think I'm gonna stay here and wait for that tortoise to come back. Because, let's be real, we know that you have the tortoise. Look, I have no Thomas. Wait, I mean, tortoise. Thomas? Thomas? The, a tortoise named Thomas? That's actually a really good name. Like, props to you for that one. But, uh, but like, no, 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 no. If there's a tortoise named Thomas, then you gotta bring him to me, or else I'm gonna kill you and find him myself. What? Oh, no. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's gonna happen. No. <laughs> oh, man, I, I sure hope nothing bad is happening. Thomas, what did, what'd you do with Ian? Thomas. <laughs> but Thomas, no, what's Poseidon warned me about this? You can't go around raiding the village anymore. You can't eat any more humans. I can get you out. No! I'll stick to humans. Thank you. But, but, 
fine. But we're gonna have to come up with a plan quick. People will be coming searching for Ian too. Wait, you can talk? Oh, miss. All right, we gotta think of something. Uh, you know what? Thomas, Thomas, Thomas. Uh, just get down to get that clip and uh, quick. I think I hear him coming. Thomas. Hey, Skyron. What's going on? Hey, Scott, how's it going? Uh, I don't know. What do you guys want? Uh, we're looking for our friend Ian. He was chasing after this tortoise that's been causing a lot of hubbub around town. We're looking for Ian. Now, why would I know anything about Ian? Well, we heard he was talking to you guys the last. He was talking to you. But, but, all right, you got me. I might know a little something about Ian, but you guys are going to have to do something for me first. And what may that entail? Yeah, what is that? Well, I'm getting pretty old now, and my wife left me, so if I'm honest, I've... Sometimes I struggle to bend over and properly bathe my feet. So, if you two were to lend a hand, then I might be able to get you the information that you're looking for. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, great. Just set down all your valuables over there so they don't get dirty, and I'll get set up on the edge of this cliff. Are you sure about this? Oh, I'm totally sure about this. All right, are you guys ready? <laughs> yeah, we're ready. I guess so. All right. Whoops! Oh, oh. oh. Yo. <laughs> you get him, big guy? Who? 
the point is, Theseus is extremely strong. I mean, he's my son after all. And, you know, you better prepare, please. If he's so dangerous, then why don't you just stop him? The gods would have my head. Like, come on now. Like, we can't just interfere with mortal life all the time. You know what? Some problems you just have to learn to deal with by yourself. But, you know, since you're my son, I believe you got this, Skyrun. Come on. I believe you. All right. Got this. Tom. Hey. He's gonna be coming soon, and you know the Joe, right? Thomas! Thomas. Theseus, I've been expecting your arrival. And you must be Skyron, Corinth's most notorious, most notorious bandit. If you don't know anything about me and what I've been through, I am no bandit. I know who you are, I know what you've done. Murdering relentlessly, nearly half of this town has disappeared at your hands. Who's to say you haven't murdered just as many on your way here? All the people I murdered were for justice. They deserve to die. They continue to mean nothing. And what about me? And what about you? Will I mean nothing when I die? Of course. You're a murderer and a scoundrel. And I'm your brother. <laughs> How could this be? How else? Okay. Look, you're, you're, your mother's Aethra of Trozen. You're on a on journey to find your alleged father, Aegis, but you are wrong. Our father is Poseidon, god of the sea. <laughs> Why wouldn't Poseidon just come to me if this is true? Look, I don't know, brother, but he said, should you come? He wanted me to show you something. Well, okay. Where is it? Right down, right down here. What is that? Is that what? Get that, babe. What are you doing? Trying to kill your own brother? Brother, I knew it. You really are a scoundrel. Oh! Oh! Hey, you idiot! Hey, Having vanquished the infamous bandit Skyron, Theseus attained even more glory and was hailed as a hero from Corinth to Megaris. With the mystery of his father solved, this part of his journey had come to an end. Although Theseus' story ended in victory, the same could not be said of Skyron. Sadly, isolation from his family and his growing greed for power caused Skyron to descend into madness, leading, as you all just witnessed, to his descent into a life of crime and an early demise. But you all can avoid such a fate. Do not allow loneliness or desire for prestige to rob you of your humanity. Do not become devoted to foolish things like deceptive gods, temporary authority, or tortoises. You alone have the power to shape your fate. Do it wisely. Awesome job, guys. Thank you. And without further ado, our second performance for you tonight. Thank you. Today. This morning. Whatever. Long ago, there was a great war between the Titans and the Olympians. The Olympians prevailed after killing and sending the Titans to Tartarus. However, there were two Titan brothers who had assisted the Olympians in winning the war. Prometheus, the Titan of Foresight, and Epimetheus the Titan of Hindsight. With his powers to see into the future, Prometheus realized the Titans would fall and chose to help the Olympians. To express his gratitude for the Titans' help, Zeus allowed them to create the living creatures that would roam the earth. Promise, epicenter, how the heck are you? Um, my king, it's actually Prometheus and Epimetheus. That's exactly what I said. Anyway, I'm so glad you chose the winning side of the war. Actually, I wanted to support- Of course! 
we have faith in you overthrowing the rest of the giants. Right. Well, I could have done it myself, technically. But because you did betray your brothers to help me, I'll let you get a special gift. A, a gift? Yes. You, go, you both can receive the very special task of creating all the living creatures on Earth. Oh, great. So basically more work. Excuse me. This is a hugely noble honor. Do we get extra credit for doing this? No. Ugh. It's very recommended that you do it, though. <laughs> Why? Because if you don't, I'll throw you into the depths of Tartarus myself, and you'll have to spend eternity with the brothers that you betrayed. OK, OK, Zeus. We're only joking. <laughs> Why would we ever think of defying the great Lord of Lightning himself? Exactly. Is he gone? Yeah. Ugh. And so, Prometheus and Epimetheus begin the extreme undertaking of creating all the living creatures in the world. The Titan brothers bless the animals with special abilities which bore similarities to the godlike powers of the Olympians. Some creatures could fly, other creatures ran quickly, and still more could swim and live underwater. However, there's a special species of creatures that Prometheus and Epimetheus cherished with all of their hearts, and that was the human race. Aw, just look at his little brain. It's simply adorable. It's so small and useless. So cute. Are you guys calling me a fool? Aw, he can see through our mockery. The human race, although showing very little potential at first, were the closest resemblance to the gods in both physical form and emotional instability. The striking similarity pushed Prometheus to value the creatures. However, Epimetheus, the brother tasked with the responsibility to bestow a special power upon them, had just run out of supplies. I swear to myself, Epimetheus, you do this every time. Hey, you're the one who wanted to side with the Olympians. Shut up, you're scaring him. Whatever, everything scares him. I don't understand why you have to gift him with intelligence. I wanted him to be the smartest and strongest creature in the world. Well, he can't be that if he's only smart enough to realize he's basically the weakest living creature there is. The Titan brothers pitied the humans, creatures who were gifted with intelligence, yet no means to advance upon it. Uh, Epimetheus? What is he doing? Uh, he's huddled up on the ground while crying? The humans were subject to the whim of the gods, especially Zeus who feared the mortals would overtake him if granted the opportunity to do so. Pomegranate episode! How's the project going? Um, it's actually Prometheus and Epimetheus. And, um, it's going good. Make sure none of those creatures have too many powers. I don't want anyone thinking they can threaten my reign of power. It's colder than the 300's hallway. I'm freezing. I hate my life. Wait a minute. Who said that? Nobody? Nobody? Overcome by the sad state of the humans, Prometheus realized that fire was the humans' only defense against Zeus's tantrums. I mean raging storms. However, it was only found upon Mount Olympus, where the gods resided. Filled with determination, Prometheus sought to make Zeus give the humans fire, no matter how many times he had to ask. Please. The Titan was not going to say no for an answer. Please, please, let the humans have fire. I'll do anything, I swear it. No, oh. and don't ask me again. Okay. Fuming from Zeus's blatant refusal, Prometheus felt the flames of revenge burn within him. With reassurance from his brother, Prometheus began to hatch a plan. Brother, what are you going to do? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to fix this mess before I throw you into Tartarus myself for causing emotional distress to me and this poor human. Prometheus pondered about his plan to steal fire from Mount Olympus. Days and nights passed as Prometheus stared at the sky from Earth, thinking about different solutions. Oh, hey, Helios. Good morning, Prometheus. Watching me travel across the sky again? Yeah, thanks for always bringing up the sun. Of course, it's my job after all. Otherwise, I wouldn't have signed up to be in a flaming chariot for all eternity. <laughs> Wait a minute. Flaming chariot? As in your chariot made a fire? Yeah, 
I can't talk while I'm gotta go. I, I have an idea. Prometheus hatched his brilliant plan. He waited until nightfall when Helios was asleep. Then Prometheus proceeded to sneak into Helios' house to steal fire. without any of the gods' knowledge. Prometheus had successfully managed to steal the very tool the gods had warned him not to take. However, Prometheus knew that mankind needed the fire to advance forward and establish civilization. So, Prometheus rushed back to Earth to deliver the valuable tool to humanity. It's so cold for Prometheus. Don't worry, human. Prometheus will be here soon. We're brothers. We fight all the time. Epimetheus. Human. I have fire. What? Fire? I thought Zeus refused to give it to you. Yeah, and Zeus is just mad because he's uglier than our humans. So he's getting cute. <laughs> what else did you do? Oh, well, lots of things. You can forge weapons. You can use light in the darkness. You can cook some food. Burn your ex's house down. But first, let's start doing this. Just roast it over the fire, and you can eat it once it turns golden brown. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, I'm going And so, Prometheus and Epimetheus watched with pride as the human learned to harness the power of fire. However, Prometheus's efforts would not go unnoticed by the gods, especially by one god in particular. I smelled something absolutely delicious, and it seemed to be... What the heck? Busted. Parmesan, empanada. <laughs> what in the name of Olympus is this? You know what, Zeus? I've had it. For the love of everything that Epimetheus and I created, my name is Prometheus and his name is Epimetheus. I don't care what your names are, you foul titans. I told you, I didn't want. I didn't want. Shut up, you irrational god. <laughs> My humans are my creations, and I will not let them suffer for your fragile ego. You take that back. No. <laughs> and to think they are afraid of what? A creature with a flaming pointy stick? My god, no wonder your father wanted to eat you. You royal pain in the- I'm gonna ruin your life, you gigantic piece of- Angered by Prometheus's blatant disobedience, Zeus punished him by chaining the Titan to a cliff for the rest of eternity. To make sure Prometheus would be in agony for the rest of his time, Zeus ordered an eagle to tear out his liver and eat it once a day. Since Prometheus was immortal, his liver would regenerate, only to have it brutally ripped away again the next day. Although this was a bloody punishment, Prometheus never regretted saving his humans. However, Epimetheus did, for he lost his dear brother and the only companion he had on Earth. But Zeus was far from done with the human race. He wanted them to pay. I can't believe Pac-Man would humiliate me like this. I told him I didn't want the humans to have fire. They're so useless. I want that earthquake kid to pay too. Hephaestus? I'm busy, Dad. Wait, I want you to create the most beautiful woman. Oh, I can't believe we've actually come to the day where I have to create a woman to satisfy you. Sorry, but I've got better things to be making. You can learn to cope with your ma failed marriage another way. Wait, first of all, I'm not even that unfaithful. I just get bored sometimes, okay? Second of all, I need you to create a woman to destroy all of humanity. Hmm, I'm kind of intrigued now. All right then, I'll do it. It's been a while since there's been some drama. So Hephaestus toiled in his workshop, working diligently to scope the first mortal woman. He crafted the woman with careful precision, only desiring the best for his creation. Man, 
she's heavy. After Hephaestus finished making the woman, Zeus enlisted the help of the other Olympians to bestow the mortal woman with gifts. Finally, Hermes had to grant the woman her powers. I, Athena, bless this woman with the skills of craftsmanship and wisdom. I gift her coupons. I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, I'll give her a name. Seriously? How about Pandora? Meaning all gifts. Well, I couldn't think of any other better name, so I guess that'll have to do. I'll give her curiosity, too. And you think that makes this gift any better? All right, kids, settle down. Thank you all so much for helping me. I really want to get that EpiPen kid so badly. I bet he has the tiniest. One inch spear. We'll go with that. Um, <laughs> Father, I don't understand why you have to make a woman. Surely you can find something attractive without all this elaborate undertaking. Why is everyone attacking me? I just want to destroy all of humanity, especially that eczema kid's life, without actually lifting a finger myself. Fair enough. All right, Pandora, now that you're ready, here's the, this pythos. Under no circumstances do you open it. Why? She's perfect. All right, I'm going to send you down to Earth, Pandora. And? And now we wait. Mankind is going to pay. Meanwhile on Earth, Epimetheus roamed the lands, distraught over the loss of Prometheus. all alone in this world. I have nothing to live for. I have nothing and nobody. Hi. Who, who are you? Prometheus this, never made you. This is Pandora. She's the first mortal woman ever created by the gods. She's beautiful. She's even more beautiful than any of Prometheus's or my creation. Ugh, I remember your brother Panini. Nasty kid. Anyway, I wanted to thank you because you cooperated with us. You guys so, are always up to something. I'm giving you Pandora, okay? And we're not up to something. I, to prove it to you, I'll give, I'll let Pandora do the talking. I'm the first mortal woman created by the gods. I am skilled in the arts. I possess mastery over language. I am capable of fle feeling uh, deep emotions. I- Okay, okay, I get it. You're an incredibly talented woman. I don't deny that. Just please be with me. I'll be with you, Epimetheus. I like you. Even if the gods have said that you have a teeny weeny. Cut the music! Hey, they don't need to know about that. But there is something I need you to know about me. Um, Zeus gave me this pythos and he told me not to open it, but he wouldn't tell me why. Pandora, listen to me. Whatever you do, do not open that pythos. Why? Please, just don't. I know Zeus is up to something. He always is. I lost my brother to a liver-eating eagle. I can't lose you, too. <coughs> Desperate. Shut the... Come on, Epimetheus. You've been lonely for far too long. Come with me. I want you to make me curious about you. <laughs> Epimetheus and Pandora fell deeply in love that night. They spent their days learning more about each other the beautiful, curious Pandora, who is interested in learning things about the lonely, self-pitying, basically a loser titan with some <clears throat> shortcomings. Hey, I heard that. Yo, I'm the one narrating this story. Sorry, breaking character. Anyways, the two enjoyed their lives together. Pandora would stay at home using her skills to create fine tapestries and the best dishes, while Epimetheus resumed his task of making sure his and Prometheus's creations were surviving on Earth. It was a peaceful life, until one day. All right, Pandora, I'm gonna head out. Okay, be safe. All right, and remember, don't open the box. Yes, yes, I know already. All right, bye. Bye. I wonder what's in this box. Why won't Zeus just tell me? No, I'll, I'll listen to Epimetheus. I'll do some chores to distract myself. Must keep sleeping. Oh, come on, Pandora, just one look won't hurt. No, 
you've been specifically told not to open the box. I can hear something. It's calling my name. Surely nothing will happen, right? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be doing an unboxing video. And it was at this moment Pandora knew. She messed up. Ah, uh, what is this? Oh, it's so evil. No, the box, the box, I have to close it. Pandora? Pandora, are you okay? God, who did this to you? Epimetheus. I opened the pythos. You what? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just, I had to know what was inside. I was just too curious and it, it was calling my name. I'm so sorry. I let all these horrible things out. Greed, ego, lust, the coronavirus. <laughs> oh no, humanity's doomed. Wait, do you hear that? Hear what? It's. It's, it's making a noise. It feels warm. I think it'll all be okay. And Pandora was right. For what remained in the pythos was hope. Too fragile to survive with all of the other evils that Zeus cast upon the world, yet powerful enough to help humanity overcome it. Pandora had rescued hope from being lost. As long as we have hope, we can do anything. Hope is, was, and always will be the courage humanity needs to persevere in the face of all evils. Hello and welcome. I'd like to welcome you to our annual Festival of Dionysus. This is our final performance for this year's festival. And um, I'm just so happy you know, and thankful for all the teachers who brought their students down to celebrate with us our celebration of um, Greek mythology. It's our culminating assessment for uh, the humanities course thus far in the year. And uh, we had two awesome performances, period two. This is our final one. Um, and we just hope you enjoy the show. Thank you again for coming. Oh, one other little thing. Because it is an assessment and we don't have the individual mics for the student students, if you could just you know, make sure that we can all hear the lines so we can enjoy the show, but we really do appreciate appropriate applause and laughter. So thanks again for coming. Enjoy. Hello everyone, thank you so much for coming. Today we'll be performing Paris and the Golden Apple. We hope you enjoy. The following is a more or less true story of the events that led to the Trojan War. It was the day of Thetis and Peleus's wedding. Thetis, a goddess, was prophesied that she would have a son who would become greater than his own father. The king of immortals, Zeus, grew fearful and demanded that she marry a mortal man. He chose Peleus for her mortal husband. And now, by the power I vested in me, by the state of Mount Olympus, I now pronounce you man and goddess. You may now kiss the bride. And now, my fellow goddesses, Hera and Aphrodite would like to perform a sacred dance choreographed by yours truly. May this become a holy ritual for generations of mortals to follow. Activities began. <laughs> All eyes were on the three most powerful goddesses. Spotlight. 
Hera, the goddess of marriage, Zeus's wife, and queen of the gods. Athena, the goddess of wisdom and strategic warfare. And Aphrodite, the goddess of love, beauty, and fertility. These three goddesses each believed they were the most beautiful on Mount Olympus, and this is where the problem began. All the immortal gods and goddesses were invited to the wedding. All except one. Woo! So you didn't so if you didn't want to invite me to the wedding after I planned the bridal shower and set up the online registry, fine, whatever. I just have a little gift for all my brothers and sisters. An apple for the fairest. Have fun. Well, well she, she clearly, clearly met, met me. me. Family. So that was mine for sure. Lovely feet, my toga. You wear size 13 sandals. Men size 13 sandals. <laughs> she clearly looked at me when she said it. Y'all thought this was a game. It's obviously meant for me, the queen of the gods. Okay, oh, you know what? Okay. You don't even have a right to yeah. be yeah. for me like that. Oh, okay. don't try it. Don't no. try it. We need a man of opinion to settle this. Zeus! <laughs> Can't y'all see? I'm busy. What do you want? Babe, can you please tell your daughters that I am the baddest and I should get the apple? They look like every other goddess here. Sit down, Grandma. Your mothballs are old enough to vote. I'm constantly stepping on necks over here, so I don't know what you think this is. Oh, stepping okay. on you necks know? with those size 13. Okay, you can't fight me all the time. Enough. I have better things to be doing than dealing with this petty argument. So if y'all teach me the dance, I can get Paris to decide. Fine, Fine, whatever. Whatever. Go to Mount Ida and ask Paris to decide. Hermes will take. I'm just gonna take this. Paris? Who even is that? I hate to say it. I hope it don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. He's a prince. He usually judges cows, but I guess that's good enough for you uh, too. Whatever. Let's just get ready and leave. Obviously, this French guy will pick me. I mean, this soga is hand embroidered. These goddesses can't even spell embroidered. E M B R O Y Q U R E D. <laughs> like, I don't even know why these goddesses think they could compete. Who told Hera that color was cute? She's dressed like a couch. <laughs> Okay, I don't mean to be rude or anything, but like, I don't even know why Zeus married Hera when he's an eight and she's clearly a four. Someone needs to nominate her for Queer Eye. Oh, you so have no, to okay. Okay. You're talking no, about it's on my back. That's how it is. All right, all right. I'll come to my come feet on. again. Oh, not, not today. Nope. The goddesses finished getting ready, and Hermes, the god of travel, guided them to Mount Ida, where Paris lived with his wife, the nymph Enoni, and together they tended livestock. No. Hermes, are we there yet? Da -da 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 -da. Stop it. Hermes, if he's a prince, why does he live on a mountain with like his goats or whatever? Well, when his mother gave birth to him, she had a dream that he that she gave birth to a torch. Ow. So we told her that it meant that he would cause the fall of Troy. So in order to kill him, they left him on a mountain. But he lived. But how is he a prince now if they abandoned him? He won an archery contest, so they let him back. But what about the prophecy? They kind of just forgot about it. Hermes, why should he get to judge us? It's not fair! Because no one else wants to look at you! <laughs> Paris was perfectly happy tending with his sheep, with Inoni, and they lived a peaceful life together. Until... God, they are so glorious. My eyes are burning just looking at them. I can't see. Eh, I'd give them a combined six out of ten. Paris? I can't see anything. Oh. Paris, where are you? He, he went over there. Paris, we need you to judge something for us. Uh, so where are the goats? No! We need you to judge which of us is the most beautiful. Uh, this is difficult, difficult because none of y'all are really cute, but who's your friend, though? <laughs> I'm 
So, if I judge you guys, what's in it for me? Paris, I will give you power over men and cities. Your name will be famous throughout the world. You will all be the king of all Asia, Europe, and Yorkshire. <laughs> I'll even throw in a pair of AirPods so you can listen to the muses, and my personal favorite, Act Up by City Goddesses. Uh, uh, what's that? Uh, I have the, the AirGod Pros, the, the sound canceling's on. Uh, no, I can't turn them off, but uh, thank you. <laughs> Paris, she offers you power, but power without wisdom leads to disaster. Choose me as the fairest, and I'll give you knowledge of all arts and the men. Above all, I'll give you knowledge of yourself. You'll have intelligence enviable of the greatest scholars in the world, the AP Scholars Club. <laughs> Plus, if you use my code, Athena20, on fashiontoga.com, you can get 20% off all togas. Uh, I'm already a Fashion Toga ambassador. I don't need your promo code. I have my own. Use Paris 30 for 30% 30 off your order. All right, what can I offer? Now let's take a look at all the women. All right, um... Oh. Her hair, no, no. This one. That, that outfit, no. This one? Are those chanclas? <laughs> uh, no, no twins. Oh. Not while they're here, like oh, late, okay. later. <laughs> okay. This oh. is Helen, the most beautiful woman in the world. I can promise you her love if you choose me as the baddest of them all. But you'll have to steal her away from her husband, Menelaus. It's okay, it's not like he'll go to war or anything. Ugh. Wow, this is incredible. I've never seen such a beautiful woman before. Okay, let's see. Uh, power, wisdom, or the woman. Eh, I think I'm gonna go with the woman. Uh, Kara, you know I love you, but that outfit, not it. All those tassels make you sound like a maraca. No gracias, senora. And, Athena, you drive a hard bargain, but your hair is so matted it looks like Medusa's. But, Kevin, on the other hand... That means she chooses me! It's me in your face! Here you go, Paris. <sighs> well, finally. <laughs> Well, hello there, you. Based on your vibe, a demigod. You know you're beautiful, but your toga, it's simple. You're quiet, but misunderstood. They just, they just don't deserve to hear your thoughts. And then you murmured your first word to me. What's that? You want to leave Menelaus? We shall be married immediately. Paris, don't you have a wife? And what about it, sis? <sighs> and so, all the gods and goddesses gathered on Mount Ida to celebrate Paris's wedding. Now, the bride and groom would like to recite their wedding vows. <sighs> Helen, the first time I saw you, five minutes ago, I knew you were the one. Together, we're a perfect ten. I will promise you a life of love, and livestock. And it's not like your actual husband Menelaus will be mad or anything. And now for Helen's vows. I, I didn't know what love was until I, I heard that. I still hate Aphrodite, but Helen's vows were beautiful. She has such a way with words. Oh, I can't even top that, so I'm not even gonna try. Now, by the power vested in me, by the state of Mount Ida, I pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Oh. <laughs> Athena and Hera immediately began to plot their revenge against Paris for scorning them. The rage extended to all of Troy. No Trojan was safe. actions had serious consequences. By stealing Helen away from the Achaean king, Melnileus, the Trojan War broke out. 
Hera and Athena spent the entirety of the war fighting against the Trojans, all because they were insulted by Paris's judgment. Aphrodite, on the other hand, aided Paris for the rest of the war, but her efforts weren't enough. shot by a poison arrow and was quickly doomed to die. Because Aphrodite was immortal, she remained unscathed. Helen, where are you, my love? I'm dying. <laughs> oh. Thanks, Zeus, you're here. Please heal me, light, my love, so we can be together. Hold on. You don't have healing powers? If I had known that, I would have never married you. Fine, fine. If that's how you're going to speak to me, go fetch Inoni. <laughs> Inoni, come hither, please, my love. The nymph Inoni, Paris's first wife, had the ability to heal her ex-husband. Inoni. Please heal me, my love. I never loved her. Heal me so we can be together. What? Um, anyways, so... Uh. Tis I, your short king. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I have a mini-thon to attend. Hold on. What is a mini-thon? I don't know. Check your dad info account. Bye! No! And so Paris died and Troy fell to the Achaeans. I can't say they all lived happily ever after, but at least Hera and Athena got their revenge. I cannot thank you enough for coming, and I cannot thank the kids in the booth enough. They literally just saw the scripts today and did this on the spot. They were absolutely amazing. And Mr. Irvin, thank you so much for videotaping, Benny for taking pictures, administration for allowing us to do this. Thank you all. You are a great audience. Thank you. Thank you.